All right, fellas, what's up? So I am back from the Arnold Sports Festival. Belza still flew me out. I got to meet a lot of my internet buddies. I have a fun, actionable video that's piggybacking off of something that I noticed we've been doing in the community lately. We've been doing the muscle group tier lists. I have my own take on that, and it's gonna be a little different from everybody. It's not in that I necessarily agree or disagree with certain placings, but more so just additional conversation to add more food for thought for you so that you could actually implement things into your program. But as a preface, especially as a natural lifter, it's very important that any muscle group that you can train, you do train because that's pounds of muscle on the table. That being said, I'm going to get right into the tippity top tier with a controversial opinion a lot of people may disagree with. All right, so the tippity top of the tippity top tier is going to be a boomer talking point that I know a lot of people may resist, but hear me out, bro, wait, okay? So listen, in my mind, building a base of muscle is the most important thing because it's crazy to me as someone who has barely ever lifted weights before to do a delt specialization program or a quad specialization program when they don't have any base of muscle. It's just ridiculous in my opinion. Something that you could do to get that base of muscle is I have general strength, general bodybuilding programs that I link to under each of my videos. Those are a good place to start. But any generalistic program where you're hitting every muscle group with some type of exercise, whether that's the form of a compound movement or an isolation is gonna be where you wanna start at. All right, so I needed to talk about that first one before we could talk about the next two. Once you have a base of muscle, you'll notice some muscles grow easier and some muscles are stubborn. You need to keep your strengths to strength and you need to work on your weaknesses as well. One, if you grow a muscle easily, you found that pretty much anything you do is gonna grow it. So you don't need guidance there, I would hope. But in terms of your weak muscle groups, there's a couple guidelines you can follow. One, just pick exercises where you can actually feel the target muscle being stimulated. So here's a pro tip for you. Record yourself training pretty often because what you'll find is a lot of people will say, I did this high bar squat or whatever, and I still feel my back a lot. And then when you see it, their hips shoot up, their knees shoot back, and then it ends up being like a good morning squat. So that muscle group that you neglect because you think it's not important. So like for a lot of people that's calves, abs, people skip those two things a lot, forearms. You need to train that muscle. Not only just for the way that your physique looks, fuck that, just your strength, especially your core, which is the next entry, by the way. Your core is very important, and we'll talk about that kind of on both entries. For strength, you're not going to be able to brace as effectively if your core is weak. You can have a functional core, but if you have a baby level amount of muscle mass on it, it's not gonna be as strong of a brace as if you had brick-like abs. Now, in terms of your physique, in my opinion, of course, you can feel free to disagree off of your talking points, but Having a developed core is literally the cornerstone of your physique. It's in the name, bro. It's the core. It's the first thing people see. All right, so that was the tippity top tier. There's nothing else that can go in there, in my opinion, just because most of those things are basic things that will help you with any aspect of your training. Feel free to disagree or add to it. I'm, I'm welcome and keen for the conversation. But the next tier in of itself is going to be a little controversial just because it is the back tier. Now, what's my justification? Why does back go into a tier of its own? I feel that back is pretty much the only muscle group where if you took everything else on your body and you made it DL, like, do you even lift? If your lats and your back was just massive and you had a shirt on or even a shirt off, bro, you would still look jacked even to someone who lifts weights, okay? Back is the only muscle group other than maybe neck if you're just looking at the, the head up that'll make you look like you lift without anything else. Now you could deliberate upon which part of the back is more important. I don't think that any part is more important than the other just because when you look at a back, you see when aspects of it are not developed. Develop everything as much as you can. That's not only in terms of your aesthetics, but strength wise, if you just have a big meaty back, you're gonna be strong at a lot of things, bro. Well, how do I get a big back, bro? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've been making new entries in my final answer series, specifically talking about back development. I made one for getting better and bigger pull-ups, and then one for getting that V-taper. The next one is gonna be about barbell rows, which will be a lot of fun. But check that series out. It's gonna allow you to infer a lot of programming decisions as well. Next tier is going to include a lot of other larger muscle groups that I feel contribute a lot to your strength and your size, but not as significantly as your back. The first one is debatable, I'll say, and that's the upper leg. So like your quads, your adductors, 
your hamstrings. Why I say it's debatable is that like, honestly, bro, the legs are a huge muscle group, just like the back. So improving your leg size is gonna add just as many, if not more pounds to your physique as your back. A lot of people feel as though, like if you had to pick between a big upper body and a big lower body, what would you pick? I won't speak for you, bro, actually. So just tell me what you what you would want to start with or what you would rather work towards if you could only pick one. I'm not going to rank the individual muscles of the upper leg differently just because they're all huge muscle groups. And again, just like with the back, you notice when one of those muscle groups are not developed. So if you have big quads, tiny hamstrings, tiny adductors, you get that sweepy boy action, but you don't get that, you know, thigh closing action from the adductors or that pop from the hamstrings. Next up in the B tier, I guess the last one was B tier because it was back tier, but it was technically A tier because it came after S tier. That better make sense to you. In this high tier, the next muscle group that we're talking about is the upper arms. Now, some people are thinking like, how could you possibly put upper arms below freaking the legs? Well, here's the thing. The arms are a much smaller muscle group than the legs. So if I'm talking about what's adding to your physique in terms of pounds, the average person watching this, you're building your physique. And what is going to contribute more to your physique pounds wise? Your legs all day, every day. But the arms are still important, bro. I do feel when you have that base of muscle, they when they're overdeveloped, they definitely dramatically add to your physique almost as much as the back in my opinion. Now, again, I am not going to rank the biceps over the triceps over the brachialis. They're all important. And if one is not as developed as holistically as the others, you're going to notice and it's going to become like an S tier. Like we talked about a muscle group that doesn't grow as well or you're neglecting. It's going to become more important if you neglect it. If you'd like a more detailed breakdown, check these videos out. I have made one for the biceps and the triceps. There's tidbits in there for like the brachialis and the forearms as well. I'll end up making a forearm video, but we're gonna talk about forearms a little bit in a second. Delts are something that is very important, but I can't in good conscience put them on the same level as the legs or as the arm. Now, if you have everything holistically developed and you get some jacked and stacked delts, it can make you look like a house and a half, bro. I have made how to get big delts the final answer. That is a great place to start. And the cool thing about that is, is that you can integrate it pretty easily into your training program just because delts, when you're training them outside of compound movements, so like lateral raises, rear delt flies, things like that, you can pair it well pretty much with anything. It's not gonna be an expensive type of specialization to add to your program, like legs or back could be. The last muscle group that I'm personally going to rank and talk a lot about is the chest. That may be a little surprising considering that chest is a strong point of mine. I made a really good and popular upper chest training video. I find though that unless your pecs are like super duper jacked, they're not going to add as much to your physique as say your arms or your back or your legs will just visually. Now strength wise, dude, they're very important just because most people care about having a big old bench press. You don't get a big old bench press without getting big old pecs, okay? So in that regard, they would be at the top. If you'd like a high level breakdown, like I said, that upper chest training video breaks down, you know, just how to work different parts of the chest in general, but specifically the upper chest, and then a more holistic breakdown you can find in this final answer episode. We're in the lowest tier. It's called the floater tier. This is gonna include a lot of muscle groups that people just skip, honestly that can quickly become, in my tier list, an S tier exercise, because you're neglecting them, they're gonna be small and underdeveloped and they're going to impact your strength or size, obviously. The calves, the forearms, you gotta train them, bro, okay? I call them the floater tier because these are exercises that you could easily superset with something else in your program. So after bench press, for example, you don't have to superset bench with anything other than like a pull, okay? But if you're doing something like a shoulder isolation, like lateral raises, there's no reason why you can't do your lateral raises next to the calf machine, bro, and train your freaking calves. Or do your lateral raises next to a GHD or a sit-up bench and do some sit-ups while you still have the energy to do it. I made a really cool video in my These Exercises Build the Most Muscle series where I specifically in that episode talked about how to superset those floater exercises, gave y'all sets, reps, progressions, things like that. 
I do want y'all to check that out. Your neck would also go in the floater tier just because you can treat it pretty much the same way. If you have a, like a broly neck and you have uh, you know a depleted all might body, this is anime weeb, weeb terms, but I've, I've shown y'all pictures on the screen for non-anime watchers to give you a visual. But if you have that level of neck with that level of body and you have like a hoodie on or something, or some baggy clothes, you're gonna look jacked to the layman. All right, fellas, that was a lot of fun. Tell me where we agree, where we disagree. What is your list? What is the most important muscle group to you? How do you grow those muscle groups? Let's chat. I do wanna talk about the Arnold Sports Festival a little bit and what my weekend was like. First and foremost, thank you to the crew members at Bells of Steel. You're great. It was a great experience meeting all of you. Thanks a lot for you know flying me out being very hospitable very nice i hope we can do it again sometime it was dope the the entire festival was dope but it was also very chaotic which is why i didn't post any videos on friday saturday like i usually have been lately i also some of y'all are probably expecting like a workout video with alex that'll come soon okay i also have some other cool things cooking with bells of steel that i'll give y'all more info with as those things come into play a little bit more but Alex and I were tired that weekend, bro. I'm not gonna hold you. Have you ever had like, you know, you're supposed to do something with one of your buddies and it's like both of y'all are tired and y'all both do it because you, you know, you said you were going to, but you're kind of just waiting for the other person to say, look, bro, I'm tired as fuck. I ain't trying to do this. I was the one to break the ice and say, look, man, I'm tired and I got an early flight tomorrow. You still trying to work out? And he said, you know what, bro? I'm really tired too. I'm glad you said something. So we definitely want to connect again, get a session in. But that weekend just wasn't the weekend because we were so much more focused on experiencing the mecca of strength and bodybuilding that is the Arnold Sports Festival than we were necessarily then creating content. Um, but I did get some cool clips for you guys that I've sprinkled in this video. It was a lot of fun. I met uh, Zach Tellender too. He taught me how to muscle snatch. He is a funny ass dude in person, bro. When you watch this video, you're really cool. It was really cool meeting you as well. But I'm not gonna talk your ear off. That's the little recap on the Arnold. If you have any questions about this video, please let me know. Watch these videos now that you've watched this one. Have a great day.